Insurance isn't our only passion at UFG Insurance. We're dedicated to supporting the communities where we live and work. We proudly offer our employees paid time off to volunteer. Their work is making a positive difference across the U.S. UFG's Go Beyond Award is presented to one employee annually for exceptional community service. Striving to deliver on our promises is more than what we do. It's who we are. For a company promising community support, think UFG. Hi friends, Angelica Veneta, co-chair of Inclusive ICR. We are a coalition of over 220 employers in Eastern Iowa, all working together to grow the diversity and inclusion of our workforce, to create a space where employees feel a sense of belonging, included and valued. Inclusive ICR is a proud sponsor of the diversity, equity and inclusion track of the Iowa Ideas Conference. As you participate today, be sure to connect with other Inclusive ICR champions, as we'd love to share information with you about our upcoming coalition meetings, projects, and how our work is impacting positive social change in our region. Be sure to visit our website at inclusiveiowa.org for information on upcoming events and to sign up for our e-newsletter. Thank you and have a great conference. We'll just go ahead and get started. We want to be respectful of everybody's time. So again, welcome to uh, this session is beyond writing a check uh, for the Iowa Ideas Conference. I'm your moderator, Anthony Arrington. I'm a managing partner of, of Top Rank Culture. Uh, we are a culture facilitation uh, uh, and consulting and recruiting firm. Um, so thanks for joining us. We, we're going to have an important discussion today. Um, in this session, we're going to assess in this session, really, the response to some of the DEI initiatives and barriers faced when building a plan for implementing change. You know, what is going wrong and what's going right when it comes to intent versus action from civic leaders, employees, and the public, you know? How can quick reaction, which which I believe often comes in the form of sponsoring events and writing checks, those, those reactionary e events, um, without long-term strategy um, and more intentionality, how, does the, how could that negatively uh, impact uh, even the best of intentions? So uh, again, our time together, we're going to go with the flow. Uh, we've got some great guests. Um, we're going to talk with the panelists, and we're going to address your questions as time allows. So um, there should be closed captioning on if, if anyone needs that. Um, all the sessions will be recorded, so you should have a recording button that comes up. And I encourage you to use the Q&A chat and the WOVA app um, and the chat options to really bring uh, light. Uh, and we'll try to answer as many questions as, as we can. So. Um, this session is within the diversity, equity, and inclusion track. It is sponsored by United Fire Insurance, uh, Inclusive ICR, as well as Cedar Rapids Bank and Trust. So we thank our sponsors. Mm -hmm. Welcome. I want to welcome our great guests uh, who are leading, lending their minds uh, and their thoughts, their authentic thoughts this morning. Uh, we're going to allow you all to introduce yourself. So I'm going to start with what's on my screen. I see to the right is uh, Joy, if you could introduce yourself. All right. Good morning. Good morning, world. I'm uh, so who you are, your title, and, and what's your why for why you're here? Got it. Got it. Um, so I'm Joy Briscoe. I'm also a managing partner with Top Rank Culture. But for the purposes of this conversation, I'm going to be leaning more into that I also lead a nonprofit lens. And then I've also had the privilege of, of serving on the side of um, funding things as well, too, when I was actually in the military. And so I get the dual experience of being somebody that requests funding, but also has given funding as well too. So very excited to be here and have this conversation with all these dynamic leaders this morning. Awesome, Corey. Hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Corey Jacobson. I work in the benefit administration field, but uh, I do volunteer for a nonprofit. I'm board president of CR Pride, which is a locally uh, LGBT uh, nonprofit that we put on the yearly Pride Festival here in Cedar Rapids. And, just looking forward to learning from the others on this panelist, as well as sharing my experiences, what CR Pride's up to when it comes to supporting our community, but also what we're doing when we're reaching out to businesses for partnerships. Thank you, Corey. And uh, finally, uh, last but not least, Kate. Good morning. Thanks, Anthony. And uh, it's such a pleasure and honor to be um, on the screen with uh, three other incredible um, leaders and uh, talented individuals. So. Um, I'll start with my why, which uh, is something I believe in, um, and Anthony asked me, and so that's huge. Um, you know, somebody I want to say yes to, because I know that Anthony leads meaningful and critical conversations for our community. So 
Um, just appreciate being asked to the table. Uh, so I'm the uh, Inclusion, Culture, and Talent Officer for QCR Holdings. Um, QCR Holdings is the holding company for a, a collective of community banks, specifically Cedar Rapids Bank and Trust um, and the Cedar Rapids Marion Markets, but we're also located in Waterloo, Cedar Falls, um, Des Moines, Quad Cities, uh, Missouri, and Wisconsin. So just excited to be here. Great. Thanks, Kate. Appreciate you joining us. So let's get into it. Let's uh, we don't got much time. So uh, let's let's just, just dive right in and have some let's chop it up. Let's have some discussion. So, Kate, I'll start with you kind of reverse it around here. But my, my first question is when when you think of this title beyond writing a check and you knew you were going to be a panelist uh, and we were talking about to advance belonging, equity, inclusion and diversity. What, what does that mean to you when you when you when you when we say beyond writing a check, what does that mean from your perspective? Yeah. Yeah, great question. Um, so for anyone who doesn't know, Anthony comes with the with the tough questions, um, <laughs> seeking truths at all costs, right? So um, I know that, you know, one of the things we want to be able to do is just keep it real and have a candid conversation. And, and you know, I, I mean, writing a check is a good, it's, it's a good first step or a good second step or a good final step, or it's a good step to take at some point, because um, we all know that it does take dollars, right, in order to uh, help to accentuate and implement change and some of the things that we all think are important. But why beyond writing a check? Because that's just one one part of one part of the, one piece of, to the puzzle. And um, you know, I think there are different perspectives, but certainly uh, it's easier to write a check. There's not a lot of uh, you don't have to have a lot of uncomfortable conversations when you write a check. Um, you can uh, have a transactional, right? Um, you can have a relationship that's really based in just a, a transaction. Get your name on something. Get some good marketing. Um, you know, put your name on a poster. Put it on your resume, and then, right? We can say that we leaned into whatever that is. You know, whether it's Cedar Rapids Pride, whether it's you know. Uh, there are so many different organizations we could talk about. But at the end of the day, um, the dollars get spent. And and you still have to do the hard work, which is the heart work, right? You still got to be able to lean in. Your actions have to follow. The behaviors have to follow. Um, and everything you do has to be sustainable. So if the actions and the behaviors and the heart space doesn't mirror the check, um, you know, the check kind of uh, falls a little flat, right? After those dollars are gone. So that's my short version of of why beyond writing a check is so important. Thanks for sharing, Corey, Joy, any, you wanna uh, add any thoughts to that? Well, I love that Kate started by emphasizing the importance of the check because so often people are like, oh, well, we, anybody can give a check. And, and when you look at minority led organizations and nonprofits, Historically, there has been a huge disparity in what is funded or not. So we are remiss if we don't say beyond writing the check does include the check because that's yes. very important. <laughs> and you cannot do things without having resources and access to do those things. <clears throat> and historically, people want to uh, fund legacy nonprofits, which are doing amazing works, right? Your your Boys and Girls Clubs and those that people know, but it's a lot it can be a lot scarier to fund nonprofits that aren't as um, known or are newer or whatever have you like that. And so when we think beyond writing the check, for me, it means how can I show up as a partner in this space? So I'm going to financially support because check is important, but then also uh, I'll share an experience that I had with a regional funder that when I wrote the grant, they actually talked to me about how it needed to be. And when they seen what I wrote, again, historically as a new nonprofit leader, I wasn't requesting enough money. And they came back and said, Joy, how much money do you need? Well, you need to ask for what you, what you need, right? And, and I'm gonna encourage that because I know your first year or your first two years, you're gonna need access to resources and capital. 
And then not only did they do that, they provided training opportunities because oftentimes at our organizations, we have people that are skilled in marketing. We have people that are skilled in accounting. We have people that, so how can we go, not only including the check, but also look at the resources that we have at our fingertips and partner with organizations that we wanna serve. So, because again, most nonprofits, especially small nonprofits, they're doing more with less. And so they definitely appreciate when you can step in and say, you know what? I've got a marketing team. I know you have uh, Cedar Rapid Pride, Cedar Rapid Pride coming up, although Pride is growing, right? But again, going back to when when that started, well, great, I can step in. My marketing team can support Cedar Rapid Pride, right? And we can help create a fund here that'll hold things while you're getting your 501c3. Those are ways where you can think outside the box about going beyond the check. Again, starting with the check. That's going right. to be Joy's message because sometimes people are like, well, money's nothing. And for so many nonprofits, money is everything or not everything, but a huge portion. Absolutely. And then go to that next level and think about what other things are at your disposal. What else is at your fingertips that you maybe don't even think about as a benefit, but could really make the difference for a small nonprofit can make or break somebody's experience as a nonprofit, which collectively means the community that you want to serve. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that, Joy. And I, I get, I think one of the things, and I tease Joy, I've teased her before. I, I, I'm going to get a t-shirt. I think Ray Guns, I'm going to have them make it and put a big amper sign on it because it really is about and. Yeah. It really is. This is an and thing. It's not an or. Um, and so I appreciate you continuing to reiterate that because we're saying beyond writing a check, we're not saying mm -hmm. stop writing the check. And that's an important distinction there. So um, moving on, Corey, I want to uh, I've got a, a topic I've been thinking about. You know, we've seen over the past three years where there have been many companies writing checks and they've been and stepping up in other ways. Right. To show support for, for, for the black community and for the LGBTQ community and other marginalized communities. Um, we obviously seen this post George Floyd. Um, today, many of those same companies have cut back their funding. They've eliminated DEI leadership roles. Uh, they've they've eliminated training, and so my my question to you is why do, why do you think this is happening, and and what suggestions would you have maybe to halt the reversal of of the progress we we've seen in the last three years that seems to be falling off the cliff? Yeah, I definitely you know with us being a our nonprofit my nonprofit that I'm involved in is even different as we're super small we have no paid staff it's all volunteers, and so we we donate our time to the organization. And over these last several years, we have definitely started to see from some of our funding streams of, we're not sure we can continue with this with the way politics are, are playing out in, in the country right now. But how can we continue to, to support you in other ways? And you know, this year going into pride season, I was really a little bit concerned about um, some of the things happening in our state legislature, because un unfortunately, it's very anti-LGBTQ right now. And we saw the exact opposite this year. We saw a lot of organizations who are funding streams to us increasing their donations. We had other organizations who have never sponsored or, you know, in any way reach out saying, hey, how can we support you? I can't give you money, but we have this talent. We can help you with this. And so I was very, you know, with everything going on this year was very overjoyed and sometimes overwhelmed to see the support that is out there in the community that, yes, some of these some of these organizations may have to think differently and, and and how they show their support, but the support is was still there this year. And I was really, uh, you know, really worried about that, especially with some of our, um, you know, we put on a family friendly event every year and uh, we have a high transgender population that attends our events and the focus on those individuals right now, um, how do we continue to provide those safe spaces for our for our community, but also for those who are putting their name and their logo out there as a supporter, right? There is definitely pushback. Uh, you know, I see the positive, right? I get to see everyone coming to Pride and having a great time, but it is it is a risk for an organization to have their logo out there saying, hey, we are a supporter of this organization and, and stand behind that. Um, so definitely, while yes, uh, the last 
couple of years for all organizations that focus on DEI can definitely uh, speak from my own experience in my in my uh, professional world, uh, the conversations we've had around it. Um, it was very nice to see this year that there was still a lot of support out there, even with what was happening in this le- within right. the state legislature. Corey, you said two things that in, that intrigued me. I think it'd be good for our listeners. You said and, and you said beyond writing a check. You you said you talked about a couple of organizations who said, "Hey, I don't have the money, but here's I can lend you talent." That's an example of beyond writing a check. So that's great. I'm curious from your lens. Why do you think? Because as you as a trend, we've we've seen the drop off in support for DEI. You know, it's become a boogeyman where companies are reducing funding, but you're seeing an increase. Can you speak to maybe why you think that is in, in your space? Is it is there something unique that you're doing that other organizations can can benefit from that have continued your trend of, of getting funding in a time when some of that funding has been cut? Is there something different? I think, you know, for me, speaking personally for me, it's about building a personal connection. Yes, I definitely want you to write your check, but I want that relationship with you. I want to get to know you. I want you to get to know our organization and I want to get I want you to get to know us. Mm-hmm. One in two Americans do not have a personal, uh, a close personal family member or friend who identifies as LGBTQ, and one in, only one in ten Americans has a close family member or close friend who identifies as transgender. So there is still a lot of learning opportunities out there in in the LGBTQ community for us to share our stories, so people can get to know us as a community, as people, and see that you know we are just like every other person out there, right? We're wanting to raise a family, pay our bills. Uh, uh, how do I, you know, afford the gas in the tank this week? How do I, how am I making ends meet? And, you know, but there's also this added security in our life where I, when I go out, is it a safe location, right? Um, we hear repeatedly from people in, in our community, especially those who are visiting, will reach out and say, hey, I'm coming to town. Where are safe spaces for people in the queer community to go? Where should I not be going? And that's unfortunate that I have to have those conversations about, you know, Mm -hmm. um, and where am I most likely to refer them to? To people who support us, who we have gotten to know. um, Say, hey, you know, these restaurants are good places to go to. These uh, these venues for entertainment are also good to, are also good to go to. And and, uh, you know, definitely that has been exciting to see. But I also think it's also in the organization's interest to, to understand that they have community people, they have members of their community working for them, even if they're not identifying at work that they are. Right. So several years ago, I was sitting speaking to a VP of an organization who was interested in getting involved with their organization and started their conversation saying, well, we don't have any gay people here. So why should we be supporting you? My friend worked for their company. I know there was a gay person sitting right out, right outside the door there. And I was just like, how do I have a respectful conversation with this leader to turn this into a teaching moment? And so I use that opportunity to say, well, what are you doing internally here to create safe spaces for your community so they can be themselves? You know, would, would I be able to bring my husband to the company Christmas party? Would I be able, would someone be able to bring their transgender child to family day at, at a Colonel's game or, or whatever that is? What are we doing internally to make sure that every people in our organization, whether cisgender, transgender, black, white, Hispanic, Asian, whatever, feel safe coming to work and that they can be valued and accepted for what they bring to your organization. And I really think over these last several years, even though there's been a focus on DEI, that you are seeing the internal work still continuing. It may be a little bit quieter, but they're still doing those things. I repeatedly have people reach out and say, you know, we have, we have this person. They are perfect for this job. They're scared to move here. Do you have someone that can talk to them to let them know what life is like here? And we're always like, yeah, we're happy to have those conversations. Now, we're not going to sugarcoat it. We're going to share our true experiences, right? When I have those conversations, I always say, yes, we're getting this negative connotation that Iowa may not be LGBTQ friendly. But when you come here and you meet the people of Iowa, 
They don't care about that. Are you a hard worker? Do you care about your community? And are you going to do what's best for everyone? That's what, that's what, that's Iowa values. And that's what I can speak to when I'm out in my community. And no matter where you go, yes, you're going to have people who don't agree with that. But here we can have respectful conversations and get to know each other and still live in safe environments. Right. I love the connection you made uh, for our listeners in, in that the, inter- the, the relationship building allows for some of that internal work, right? That's the and. So beyond they wrote a check to you, you've built this relationship. And now when people are moving to the community, that company is calling you for, for help or for guidance, right? It, it, authentically and in, intentionally. And, and we need to see more of that. That's the, that's the beyond the writing the check. Great segue into the internal, uh, Kate, because I had a question that I thought would be um, you would have some perspective on as we think about writing checks in organizations to advance the culture. Um, uh, there are companies, and, and I know that we've all experienced them, where we've worked with we worked with them as an external consultant uh, uh, on DEI, and they've written a lot of checks and funded a lot of organizations. But when you look inside their own organization, you don't see it. So it's it's one of those I don't practice what I preach mentalities. And given where you're at, Kate, uh, you work with a great organization that internalizes the work that you do, and you write checks. You're sponsoring this this session today, um, but you're here and you all have done work. Can you talk about that from your perspective as an internal DEI leader and, and what it means to both practice what you preach? I am so glad you asked me that question. I was just sort of glowing with pride while, no pun intended, Corey, but while you were talking about you know, some of the things that move the needle and that beyond writing the check, I just had so much pride um, for the organization that I'm, um, that I work with. Um, And where I get to be a value added contributing employee of a great organization. So um, thanks for giving me the opportunity to brag just a little bit. Um, You know, you personally, uh, actually, all three of you, I think, have some personal affiliation with the highest level of leadership at QCR Holdings and our our collective of banks, whether that's Cedar Rapids Bank and Trust. Stacey Bentley's on this call. Shout out to Stacey, Shantara Martin, Marilyn. Um, got a lot of great CRBT and CBT folks supporting the call today. Um, I know that, again, we support um, Corey, your nonprofit that you give so much of your heart space and time to um, look the internal piece is everything. Uh, people are smart. Um, they'll know whether you're writing a check or whether you're checking a box. They'll know whether it's a check out of guilt and shame to make you feel better about who you're not. Then, you know, if you're, if you're not living the words and inclusive leadership is everything. And I will tell you that a fun story, just to sort of exemplify what you're asking me, Anthony. And look, I'm not going to act like it's perfect. Do we have work to do? Of course we have work to do. Everyone has work to do. Um, Everyone can lean in just a little bit more. Everyone can, um, you know, embrace and, and, you know, invite in more creative and inclusive collisions into their life, right? We can all lean in more. But the first year that we sponsored and had our name, CRBT, right, on uh, the, at the Pride Festival, Corey, um, there was a lot of talk around that, right? Like, okay, so we have clients, do we have clients who are gonna be upset? Are we gonna, what are we gonna get from this? And what we've received has both been tangible, measurable, and then things that you can just feel. So it's been a very holistic experience that I think I can speak with great pride um, on behalf of our leadership. I know that uh, an employee went to Larry Helen, who is not just the founder, one of the one of the uh, four co-founders of CRBT, but also the CEO of the holding company. Um, Huge, you know, presence there in Cedar Rapids in terms of just caring about people. Um, But an employee said, you know, why are we sponsoring this? I don't agree with, right, the values. Um, I don't necessarily agree with uh, the fact that um, this represents all employees, right? And so, um, you know, Larry explained that, look, uh, I respect the fact that you don't necessarily agree with, um, you know, certain values or certain mindsets. However, 
with our bank, it's not either or. It's this and, right? It's coming from the true place of inclusion where we're able to um, represent a number of organizations. We're able to do it authentically. Uh, and, you know, it takes leaders not being afraid to do exactly what you're talking about, Corey. And that is to, to be who you are, to do the right thing and the smart thing. Um, you know, to put your money where your mouth is, right? If you can't walk the walk, uh, the talk means nothing and the check um, falls flat. So just to have that top down, right? The tone always has to start at the top. And I think when you talk about Anthony asking me about the internal presence and the journey um, of inside of an organization, um, I think it's absolutely critical that we always have, you know, executive leadership support the tone's always set at the top, um, and I, I'm encouraged to see that when we have those leaders, um, not just saying the right things, but taking the actions and some of the big risks, we end up with the be best outcomes for everyone. Well, thank you for sharing that, Kate. You're, you know, an example of someone, you know, we, we see the Kates of the world being removed from organizations throughout the country over the past couple of years. We saw, you know, the number of DEI leaders you all are leaning in. And I think your story is another important of the and. I'm going to keep, keep saying the and because that's important. Here's Larry, Larry I understand, who is a, a huge executive. If anybody lives in, in Iowa and in banking, they know Larry, even outside of CRBT. But he had an opportunity. He could have easily walked away from that conversation. Um, he's a middle-aged white man. He could have walked away from that, that employee who didn't resist, but he took an opportunity. That's a proverbial arrow, right? That's the proverbial arrow. And he, he took the arrow and he dealt with it. And that's that's going beyond. Um, and I would reverse it and I would say, we always say, put your money where your mouth is. I want companies to put their mouth where their money is. <laughs> and I also, I also want to it's add great. on that too, because when, when you say he took the arrow, what we also have to point out is in both of the examples that Corey and Kate gave, there was benefit to that, right? Like, yes. Not only was it that people that uh, supported and sponsored Pride Cedar Rapids, not only do they now feel that there are places and pla that people that are of the LGBTQ um, background that they can go and they can feel psychologically safe, but then Corey, you in turn are recommending people go to those businesses, right? Like you are actually doing that. And Kate, you said the same thing, right? Like that you all saw that there was tangible, measurable outcomes by you embracing that. So I think sometimes when we're encouraging people to move beyond the check, when we're encouraging people to create and support psychologically safe spaces for minoritized identities, there is a fear that pops up because, well, what is someone going to say? But I want us to acknowledge that for the most part, the larger presence, yes. not only is there a benefit financially, but now you also have where your workforce feels supported. You also have the quarries of the world doing recruiting in a way that the best recruiting plan yes, can't do, totally. attract can't do people to yep. move yep. here because That's word right. of mouth is saying, hey, I know you see right. this about Iowa in the news and we can talk later about the fact that mm -hmm. demographics are changing and that the up and coming workforce, they want to work for companies that care about their people. It's a huge thing. So we can we can go into that in another session. But again, from having that mindset, I need I need people in leadership and organizations to be brave in that and understand that being brave and, and, and shaking sure. off a few of those arrows. Yeah has so many benefits, not only for your company, for your people, for your community, for the families you serve, all of the above. And so I want to point that out because there was a, a strong through line in both Corey and Kate's story. Yes. We, you guys are making my segues great here for our you listeners. Know, That's a beautiful topic. Go ahead. Go ahead, Kate. Yeah, Anthony, I was just to say one one additional thing. So interestingly, there were people who, who I'm sure right, I had conversations with Larry, like we might lose this client or that client, or what are we saying if we, if we are, you know, have our name or our brand on, on uh, at, at a very visible festival like this, right? But I will tell you that one of the things I shared um, with our leaders is that what you don't see are how many new clients we're getting because they're looking for an inclusive partner to do business with, right? Like, if you think people aren't educated and they don't look to see where their their business and their dollars are going to be heartfelt and appreciated, um, I think that you know that's a real 
um, blind spot for, for certain organizations is, you know, you're afraid of the criticism, but let's look at the, at the opportunity. Um, and another thing, interestingly, Anthony, is that what we've seen is the number of people who are willing to self-identify in our surveys as LGBTQ plus or transgender has gone up. And I can tell you what, we didn't hire 20% more LGBTQ people. What we've done is we've invested in creating a space where people are not afraid to say, this is who I am. And I just think that's super powerful. And also, It is. And that's so great. I'm glad you shared that, Kay, because one of the things that we talk about, we talk about data, uh, which is so important. If you do the right things, the data will take care of itself. I I always say that. we, we, we focus on the data first instead of the people first. If you focus on the people, the data will take care of itself as a natural progression. And one of the things that we talk about, too, is that you would you may see an increase in the number of complaints in your company for a little while. That's not sometimes that's not always a bad thing, because the end of that is you're getting people to trust and open up. Um, and so that and that's important to building the, the right culture. So thank you for sharing that. Um, Joy, I want to circle back to you. Um, as we talk about uh, hiring you, you I, I love that you mentioned that Corey becomes a recruiter um, because we know, and as Corey said, the 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 employer that he was speaking to, to said that we don't have any gay people in the company, and, and they did. Um, we hear the same and thing. And we all knew they did. Like we when, all, when, we when all they knew said they that, did. between us all, we were all like, yeah, okay. Yeah, like, we, yes, yeah, you exactly. do. Right? That's <laughs> yes, the, the bubble in the head. But let's yeah. dig into that. I, I don't want to say you, you, you know not what you're talking about, but let's dig into it. And Corey did that. When we think about that, that, that mindset, when we think about recruiting overall and uh, attracting, attracting talent overall, I was reading a Bloomberg magazine report. Joy, you may, someone may have shared it with you. Joy, maybe you did. I don't know. Um, but it was talking about post George Floyd in the year 2020, 21 Bloomberg did a study of the S and P 100 companies and their hiring. This staggered me. It showed that 91, 94% of the, empl- of the 300,000 plus employees hired in 2021 were people of color. 94, nine out of every 10 employees hired in the S and P 100, 2021 post George Floyd were people of color. What does that tell us? That's exciting, right? We know the gap is still wide, but what that tells us is that this conversation we've had for years about we can't find people, we can't find people of color, we can't find women, we can't find people with disabilities, is how do I, how do I manage, how, how do you see that dichotomy, Joy? Because it happened in one year because people were intentional, organizations were intentional about their work. So that tells me if that is there's intentionality beyond just saying you're gonna sponsor and beyond just saying we don't think that what happened to George Floyd is wrong and we, we think that uh, black people should have more opportunities beyond saying that and, right, and sponsoring, people were doing the work. Now we're hearing today that we're struggling again. How do, how do we- Oh, how do we, how do we, shoot. I, I think that intent is everything, right? Like you 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 started by saying that, Anthony, that what happened in 2020, uh, I love what Kate said earlier. We didn't go out and hire 20% more. It's just that people felt safe enough. We were creating this environment of belonging. And so I think that organizations that really want to commit to, to DEI work, which again, I always stress, there is a benefit for that. So I guess it's the right thing to do, but there's also some some financial benefits for that, right? You have to be intentional. You have to center the people you're trying to support. And that comes with some self-awareness, not only internally as who you are, but organizational awareness, right? Tasha Urich, who is an amazing um, organizational psychologist, she says that nine, like, I think it's like most people think they're self-aware and 90% of people per her in a Harvard review aren't self-aware. What that means is that we all have internal work to do, not only as individuals, but also as organizations, right? So we have to be aware of that and show up. It also means that you have to look at who's in your environment, right? So if I'm saying I want to hire more people with disabilities, and then I look around me, and I don't, I'm not aware that I even have people with disabilities around me, how, effect, how, how much do I think I'm going to reach my goal of that, right? because there's nobody in my immediate circle about that. So I have to 
think outside the box. I have to expand my network. I have to be intentional in that, right? Like I, you can't, Anthony knows I, says, I say this, you can't recruit where you don't go. So if you're not going to HBCUs, if you're not going to um, Hispanic serving institutions, if you're not con connecting with indigenous populations, if you're not over at your VA, but you say those are populations that you want, if you're not at CR, CR Pride, then you are, do you really, are you really trying to con support those organizations? Are you really trying to reach those people? And you should be because there is benefit to that and it's the right thing to do. So I think intent is so important. That would be my first one, be intentional and then also have self-awareness, but not only self-awareness as you, but self-awareness about our organizational practices as well. Thank you for sharing that. That's again, another part of that and that's the mm -hmm. beyond the writing the check. What are we doing to think outside the box and invest in internally? Thank, thank you for sharing that. Um, one more question I think I'm going to ask you, Corey, and I think we got a couple questions in the chat. I want to make sure we get to our audience. It's 10, 10, 15. I believe we're going until 10, 40, I believe. Uh, that's correct. So, um, so, so Corey, uh, one of the things that I, from the lens of DEI practitioners and, and citizens who are adversely affected by the work that that we do, um, th there's a clear indication, you know, I, I think that we would all agree here that, I, and I'll, this, these are Anthony's words, we're under attack by legislation um, from reducing and eliminating DEI funding and education and academia. That's happening right here in Iowa with a bill has passed to, to freeze funding for the three regents university for any additional DEI funding. Um, we've eliminated affirmative action initiatives at the Supreme Court level. <clears throat> and now we have many corporations because of that reviewing their DEI efforts to determine whether they can follow suit. Um, I, I just uh, read an article last week about there's 13 states where attorneys generals are now threatening Fortune 100 companies with, with lawsuits and serious consequences if race is taken into consideration in hiring practices. So you see all these, what I, what I call attacks on, on the, the work that we're trying to do to create a multicultural society where everybody belongs. Um, how do you feel about th this, Corey? What, what are your thoughts and, and how have you seen organizations overcome that, this hurdle um, that can't be resolved with just writing a check? Right. So, and, and I agree with everything you said, but I'll just add on there, you know, specifically for the queer community. Um, most of these books on this bookshelf are going to be banned from schools. And these books that are on this bookshelf were not books that I ever had access to when as a children, because no one was writing books like this. So the visibility for children is being taken away. Um, we also see, uh, you know, psychological, uh, unfortunately, mental health issues in the community for our transgender youth because they can no longer get, their parents cannot treat them with their, with their doctor to identify as who they are because the legislature believes, these are Corey's words, not CR Pride, that they know better than parents on how to raise their children. Um, we, uh, the Supreme Court this year and the 303 creative decision basically said if someone has a religious uh, belief that they don't have to serve the queer community. They can turn them away. They can ask them to leave. And so these things are, you know, for all of us are very, are very, con very concerning. And we as, uh, you know, leaders here in the community and across the country have got to continue to have those respectful conversations so that we can just get to know each other. Um, we do not have to like each other. You do not have to like me. You cannot agree with who I am. I, my, my sexuality is not a lifestyle. It is who I am. You cannot agree with who I am, but you have to respect me. And I have to respect you, even if you do not value me as an individual. And how do we come together and make sure that every person in this country is given what our Declaration of Independence says, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Because right now, there's a lot of liberty and pursuit of happiness take, being taken away, which across every minority group is causing life to be taken away, unfortunately. Right. And so we have to have some hard truths. And I feel in my position here with CR Pride that with everything going on, we still see those organizations talking the talk and walking the walk. You see it with what Kate is saying here today and what her organization is still doing. You see it when you 
when you go to a college campus and you see students and teachers and professors out there protesting all of these things saying, hey, this is not why I came here. This is not what I want. I want to live in a world that it respects everyone for their individuality. Um, and so it's been great to see those things. You know, we, we've talked a lot today about George Floyd and, and being out and protesting and, and doing those things. I was one of those people out there. I was blind before that. I've lived a privileged life and I had to have a serious wake up call with my friends in the African-American community. And I realized there were things that I needed to be doing. And so I, I've been able to do those things and take that, those conversations that I've had with them and bring them to see our pride and use those as learning opportunities to continue to have conversations with other people. And it's not just about me walking the talk, right? Even if, if I, if you're, let's face it, there's a lot more straight people, cisgender straight people in this country, in this world, than there are um, LGBT people, right? I don't know, Corey. Are you sure? Yeah. Are, you sure? <laughs> are you sure about that? I, I, I'm, 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 I, I, I just think, I don't, I, I think we got to get that. At, we'll see. We'll okay. see. Okay. All right. Well, but, you know, having those conversations where, you know, like a couple weeks ago, I was with some friends and we have a, a mutual friend and they were talking like, well, well, wait, they use they, them pronouns. Doing just something that easy can make someone see, feel seen and heard. And you still see those intentional conversations happening. I know where I work, even though with everything going on, there's been no let up on our DEI. We still have conversation corners every month. We still like this week, Wednesday was National Coming Out Day. My company had a, a, a Zoom a, a meeting for anyone to attend that could come and hear about what people's journey of acceptance was and how they and how they come to themselves for their, uh, yeah. you know, uh, bring their whole selves to work and those types of things. And so there are still ways to do those things. Yes, uh, public. You know, we're talking private sector, right? So there's a there's more leeway there. Sure. But in these public sectors, you are. St- still seeing I live at the city of Cedar Rapids they were in the pride festival they were at the pride festival last year they were uh, in the parade the Cedar Rapids Police Department was at the festival um, the Cedar Rapids fire department brought a fire truck for the kids to see so you still see at the local levels that people are like hey we're here we're here for you we are welcoming and we want you to know that you are safe and valued when you're here and that is my message when I go anywhere. I will go talk to anyone as long as we are going to have a meaningful and respectful dialogue where you can learn from me and I can learn from you. And we can agree that we may part disagreeing, but we have had a a civil conversation and hopefully each of us has taken something away from that, that, and my hoping, I'm hoping to change minds, right? I'm not going to change my mind and, and go back and say, no, I don't belong here, but I can at least understand your conversation. Uh, and and your point of view, and I'm, I'm happy to have had that conversation. And it's 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 all at the molecular level for me, right? Is if we can if we can have these conversations, I have high hope for the next generation coming up. I get to interact with you so much, whether it's at Pride, them coming up and saying, "Oh my God, this is my first Pride. I can be myself." Um, you know, a 14 year old telling me that they're afraid to tell their parents that they're gay and that they're going to get thrown out yeah. of their home. I can have those conversations and say, I am proof that life gets better. I've been in your steps. I've had those, I've had those, those worries throughout life. Yeah. And so there's a huge opportunity uh, for organizations, especially with organizations that I know we all have, we all have queer people that work for us to lean in them to help mentor, right? mentor at work, share their stories. Cause you know, it's not just that when I worked at, I worked back in the day, I worked for the bullseye as a, as a manager. And I had a parent come up to me and say, I've never worked with an LGBT person before. And I've been able to have some really important conversations with my kids at home and, and impact change that way. So it's not, it's not even, not even a direct, it's through a, you know, a, a worker, I'm saying work an indirect. Around words indirect, but, yeah. uh, an indirect connection right and and i you know i got invited to that kid's graduation <laughs> party and i was like whoa you know and he says i know i feel like i know you and so yeah. just having those conversations and seeing what these organizations are doing 
um, even if in the light of the way politics are right now, we're right. still doing the hard work. It may be a little bit quieter, but I'm still noticing there is a lot of it going on. And that's what I hear, yeah. what I what hear from it? you and Kate and everybody stay the course, you know, these stay organizations the that are staying the course, um, you know, a CRBT stay in the course, your organization stay in the course. Uh, Joy talked about in, intentionality. Uh, and so I think what I collectively hear from you all is the organizations that, that care, that truly cared post, post George Floyd are the ones that are staying the course. I want to circle back too, because I just, when, when, when Corey said, you know, there's more cisgen people. I'm the mother of two um, queer children, right? And so I don't think it's a society that we've even gotten to a place where people that are of the LGBTQ faith or, or back or identity even feel comfortable enough where we even have an idea of who really is all there because I've been in so many sessions and facilitation and Anthony, we, we can talk about that where yeah people say, I didn't feel comfortable at work. I didn't feel comfortable at school. And so I'm hoping from conversations like this and employers tuning in that hopefully, you know, my children's children won't have to deal, like they will have a, a better understanding so that people authentically feel like they can be themselves and that they can, and again, I understand we, we are, DEI is under attack right now. And again, representation is so important. And I, I remember, my own trans daughter, when, when she came out to me and she was about 13, 14, and then went on to high school. And she, at that time, she was the first um, gay homecoming king at that time. And I just remember younger kids, cause I worked for the school district and they actually came up to me and, and was just saying, you know, that I was truly inspired. This was the first person in our hometown that I saw. And so that's why I say, you know, we don't really know because we really have never nurtured creating that environment as communities, let alone in the workforce. But I'm inspired by like the work you're doing, the work Kate is doing, and Anthony on a Kate, the work that we do too, right? We play a small role in that yes. as well too, <laughs> that hopefully as we go on, that communities will be better and that more people will actually feel like they actually belong and that they can be them authentic selves. Because again, you just show up so much better when you can be you, right? Like nobody can be you, like you can be you. And so how do we create those environments where people can truly be who they are? Yes, yes. So hopefully for those out the business owners or folks online that are that are listening, I hope, I hope you're getting some good nuggets around around staying the course and what what this beyond means. You know, Anthony, can I just mention? So first of all, please do. I have to apologize for to everyone because I realize I got a lot going on over here. So I'm actually live from the uh, state of Iowa Shurum conference at the Iowa Event Center. And I got locked out of my room just just now. So if you saw me go like, no, right? I'm like kind of in this weird um, hallway. Uh, so I apologize for all of the, no the random squirrelness going on in my background. <laughs> no worries. Um, but I wanted to just say that, you know, when it comes to staying the course, um, I think the only way to do it is just through critical conversation and connectivity. Like, look, it's really hard to hate Corey if you take the time to build a relationship. It's really hard to um, not feel, right, uh, a connection with Anthony or Joy if you if you haven't taken the time to lean in to the conversation. Um, it, when, when things, when we keep things at a distance, when we only write a check, we're keeping distance between ourselves right? And the actual issues and the people. And, and I think the check, one of the things I just want to say is it allows us to have the safe distance where we don't really have to get our hearts involved. We don't really have to feel, right? The personalization of how these things impact people. We can write a check and we feel like we've done our job. And again, like Joy said, please keep writing the check. You got to write the check. But that's only, again, just the, a very small part of the journey of, you know, how do we get people to lean in, um, to be authentic and to be genuine? And I, I do believe that there has to be some personalization. You have to get close to the people. You have to hear the stories um, and build those opportunities for safe space so people can be seen and heard. Yeah. Yeah, um, appreciate you sharing that, that Kate. Uh, I think that's important. And, and when you think about the, the beyond the writing a check. Uh, the other part of that is that the community and people 
that are impacted by the work or that no no they they see through that right they see through organizations who who may or may not be intentional about their work and so they can see organizations that are perceived horribly in their communities um, but continue to have their names on a sign uh continue to have their names on a sign and that it doesn't add up and and they they will never improve their situation no matter how many checks they write so i think that's an important point well look it's about 10 30 when it's i got a few questions here in the in the chat for you all maybe there's some tough ones i haven't read them yet but i'll throw them out here this one uh uh, my observation is that most nonprofit organizations in Iowa provide services and advocacy have boards and staffs that are by and large supported by DEI, supportive of DEI initiatives. What particular additional steps and uh, can nonprofits in the arts and social services environments that aren't focused mm -hmm. specifically on protected classes and other groups facing discrimination do? So maybe Joy, with your nonprofit background, I'll throw that to you. Um, you know, how can what what can organizations do that don't have those resources that, that don't have yeah, the board? So, got it. So so and, and if I just to recount the question, it feels like they're saying if you're not a nonprofit that is serving marginalized identity, you're more focused on cultural initiatives and things of that nature, then it might feel like it's a challenge for funding. But what I say is that there is funders out there for you. And oftentimes as nonprofits, what we don't do is we don't necessarily do the reconnaissance to make sure that our mission aligns with what this philanthropic partner funds. And so I think it takes a little more um, work to actually connect to. So like, I actually have a fashion art and culture expo, right? And so like, I know that I have access to Iowa Arts Council. I've had conversation with some other local funders that do serve arts, right? Like a lot of times community foundations do actually have an art and culture arm too. So that's another place that you can go to. So take that extra step to make sure that your energy and efforts are going into connecting with philanthropic partners that support your mission work. And that'll make you a lot less frustrated, right? Because then you won't feel like I'm, I keep hearing no, and I really want that work to be done if you actually connect with the people that can can really want to connect with you. And they do, like, let me put that out there too, right? Like if, if I'm an organization that I serve art and culture work and I'm using that, because I think you mentioned something around that, then I actually do want to meet you. We just got to find a way to intersect and connect. And so that's what I would really recommend about that, right? Like if you don't, in this moment, if, you, if you, you're feeling like, well, people want to fund Black-led organizations and women-led organizations, and here I am, I have this art show that is amazing for the community. The trick is to also do that. And then don't stray away from your individual donors too, right? Like as a nonprofit leader, you've got to diversify where your revenue is coming in from. And so that might also be an opportunity for you to really maximize individual donors. So who in your community loves artwork, right? Do a little research on that as well. And those are the people that you should activate too, right? So looking at how you can diversify that as well is what I would recommend. So, and hopefully I answered the question, but if not, shoot me an email and so. I'll, I'll dive deeper. Mm -hmm. I think so. That was from uh, Tim Wilson, great, great nonprofit leader. Good to hear, good to see you here, here, Tim. Anybody else? Any any thoughts, Corey, Kate? Just wanted to make sure. I say, you know, I also am involved in a very, in a nonprofit that's more cultural like that as well. And I, you know, when I'm talking out, I talk about how we serve those populations as well with the programming we put on, right? Uh, you know, uh, Joy was talking about art and culture. Well, are you putting on a play and, you know, you have the opportunity to put a play that highlights a minority or an organization. There's funding streams for you for those things from uh, within these within these other realms. So I know that we were successful um, in getting a small grant to to focus on some things that we wanted to focus on leaning into our, our DEI within that nonprofit is like, hey, yes, we're, here's the things that we're, you know, our mission lines up with your mission and, and here's how um, yeah. they intertwine and how we can build those relationships. Yeah. I love that point. Uh, actually, I was on, a, I'll give a shameless plug to Heather Dewey Wagner from Eastern Iowa Arts C Academy. I was on her session because I'm, I'm a moderator today, but I'm a fan of you all too. And so I, I was on some sessions yesterday and I listened to one session and I think her point's valuable and it ties to what you all are saying. 
she was saying a lot of uh, donors, you know, uh, that she got to be donors over time or maybe didn't understand what the Arts Academy did. Oh, we're just giving money to people with paintbrush and, you know, we got to buy, we're just giving money to people to have a good time. You know what? It's not anything special at the Arts Academy or well, what storytelling matters, right? And so one mm. of the things that's happening there, the tie to mental health, right? They're literally saving the lives of kids who were going to commit suicide because they were ousted in their school. They were the, the, the black sheep of the school. They were just different. They dress different. They feel different. They talk different, but they're talented artists, right? They're artists that can draw or they can do music. And so the tie is, this is a mental health, this, this arts organization addresses mental health and so, therefore, there, there is an external tie. I may not be a mental health organization, but my artwork impacts people with mental health issues, the, our foundation, the work we do. And so I, I appreciate how you tie that together because that, that matters. So. And connection is everything. Uh, we're small. Iowa, small community. We have the benefit of typically you can get access to somebody you need to from that organization. Um, oftentimes, nonprofits we spend more time on trying to write a stellar grant when the investment in having a stellar cup of coffee or a great conversation on how your work aligns would go so much further. Not that your grant can suck, your grant can't suck. Make sure your grant is good, but, <laughs> but, but also invest that time, much like what Kate said earlier, that connectivity, it's so important. That relationship building is so important. So how can you invest in that too, so that people can, like Anthony said, they can see the story behind the work that you're going to do. And, and, you know, I would add that, you know, people want it fast, right? They, 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 it's such a complex, broad arena to, um, to understand and to really, uh, you know, to do well. I think it's, there are so many components, but at the end of the day, um, you know, especially if you're talking about corporate organizations and brands versus individuals, uh, you know, people want it fast, right? They want to be able to uh, make it better. They want to try and right wrong. Um, you know, I hear lots of people when they're being vulnerable, they're sharing, um, you know, things they wish they would have done differently during their tenure or things they would have done differently in leadership or things they, but, you know, there's no fast fix. Right. I mean, we talk about the benefits of diversity, equity, and inclusion, but the truth of the matter is, is that it's a it's a long hold. It's it's not the sprint, right? It you have to build the authentic relationship, and that doesn't happen overnight. Um, sure. If we want to see the benefits of diversity, equity, and inclusion when it comes to workforce, how we look as a workforce, what our employees look like in any given organization in the state of Iowa, you have to build the relationships. You know, Joy, like Joy said, if you're not, if you don't have a relationship with an HBC or an HBU or, you know, a, a high school business teacher or a community college finance teacher, or if you don't have those connections to LGBTQ at your universities and colleges that are in your local communities, or the Black Student Alliance or the Minority Student Affair, whatever those things are, if you don't have those relationships, you can't expect to reap the benefits of DEI. Mm. You know, you can write the check, right? But but you're not going to reap those internal benefits long term that you're really looking and hoping to find for your nonprofits, your businesses, your communities, your churches, your schools, and everything else that's impacted. Thank you, Kate. Thank you for that insight. Um, and actually, it's a great uh, wrap up. Well, we're, we got about two minutes. I was going to ask you all kind of to give us, give our listeners some last words about uh, beyond writing a check and what advice would you, would you give to organizations? Uh, again, I'm putting the big amper sign up because don't forget to write the checks. Um, so um, last thoughts from you, Joy, and I'll go to you, Corey, any final thoughts that you could share with our listeners. Yeah. I, I just say again, much like you said, start with the check, but know that's the starting point be intentional in who you're trying to reach working with them. I think we've stressed that relationships matter so much, connectivity yes. matters so much and on the on the funding side of it, it is it's equally as important as you too. You will see long-term gain. It's like investing. Eventually you will reap the benefits, but you got to prepare 
now for it. And you got to invest now in it too. And then again, that organizational awareness, that self-awareness so that I know, okay, maybe we're not strong in this area. So I'm going to work on it and I'm going to make sure we're connecting with some of the groups got like it. that Kate name, named as well. It's really important you. if you want to um, go beyond the check. Thanks for sharing. Corey, any last words? Yeah, write the check. And uh, I'm happy to talk about how you can write a check to see our pride um, (laughs) because we are getting ready for our next fiscal year budget. Um, But truly uh, have have those tough intentional conversations. Let your workforces know that you're there to support them. And if you ever need someone to come and talk to your organization, please reach out. I'm always happy to uh, start that dialogue if you need it. Well, it's the top of the hour. I want to thank you all for attending the session. Thank our listeners. Thank you, Corey. Thank you, Kate. Thank you, Joy, for your insight. Um, appreciate you all spending time with us. Folks, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of the conference. I know the 1045 checks your next schedules. I believe Dynamics and Art and Culture and Board. Uh, strain within the immigrant and refugee communities is a DEI track coming. Environmental justice in Iowa is coming up. The Solar Neighbor intersection implementation and school choice, homelessness and wraparound services. Those are some of the other events coming up. So um, appreciate that. Um, Have a great rest of the afternoon. Have a great weekend. Um, And I I would be remiss if I didn't give a shameless plug for for top rank. Uh, We are here to assist you with any of your diversity, equity and inclusion needs. Uh, Feel free to reach out to any of us. Thank you, Corey. Thank you, Kate. Thank you, Joy. And thank you to the listeners. You all have a good rest of the day.